Hello and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video with myself and Martin, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So today to start off our proceedings, we have something rather interesting regarding a mysterious AMD APU. Now this particular leak comes to us thanks to the rather infamous hardware leaker Tom Apitak, who as usual has taken to Twitter to just disperse knowledge like some sort of magical fairy. And what he has shared with us this time is an AMD SoC, allegedly called Gonzalo. And apparently, according to his information at least, combines the Zen processor architecture with Navi. So we have a Zen plus Navi architecture going on here. Now it has a rather lengthy code name, which is 2G1600-2CE, 8JA2 underscore 32 slash 10 slash 10 underscore 13E9 just rolls right off the tongue, I'm sure you can appreciate, and could very well possibly be what's going to be at the core of the Xbox Scarlet and PS5, or at the very least the basis for both of those systems. So I would be surprised to not see a sort of semi-custom APU going on for both of those systems. So it could very well be that, for instance, the, the base was used for both of them, but obviously both companies had different requirements, what they asked for from AMD, and they both sort of sprouted off from the sort of main trunk, as it were. Now, naturally, there has been a lot of speculation and rumours and discussion surrounding what we're going to be seeing powering this Xbox Scarlet. There was some comments from Thurret, who basically said that we're going to be seeing Zen 2. But there have also been reports from Pharonix that a Sony compiler was actually using Zen Plus to do so. So it's entirely possible that we're going to be seeing a Zen Plus and Navi hybrid also due to the cache information that we see shown in the image that Apisac has actually tweeted. But that is pure speculation. It is entirely possible that it is Zen 2, but maybe, maybe they've cut the cache for the consoles or made other cache cuts sorry, that we don't know about. So technically it's not Zen Plus or Zen 2. Or something else entirely is going on. Or Tom Apisak's information could be wrong, but his information has been pretty on the money, generally speaking. So, of course, we're going to have to wait and see what is actually going on with this, but it is rather intriguing, to say the least. So, let's move on to the next item on our list, shall we? So, this one is for anyone using Linux out there, as we have an update to Linux 4.20 that allows overclockers to increase Radeon TDP power limit. Now, those of you who do use Linux will be probably fairly familiar with overdrive for overclocking, which obviously does the usual of you know, core and memory clock speeds and obviously decreasing the power and all that sort of thing. But there was no support for increasing the TDP power limit beyond its default, but a recent change was made to for Linux 4.20 to allow increasing the power limit when in overdrive mode. Now, this piece of news comes to us thanks to Pharonix, who themselves were tipped off by one of their readers, so thank you very much to them. There will be a link to their article in the description below this video. So, something nifty for the Linux overclockers of you out there. But let's move on swiftly, shall we, to TSMC and 7NM. So, what do we actually see here then? Well, as I've discussed multiple times now, TSMC have been doing rather well for themselves, unsurprisingly given that everyone and their mum is interested in the 7NM process. And of course AMD themselves have become a major partner of TSMC in their battle against Intel. And they have very much leveraged the 7NM process to keep performance high and all that good stuff. So unsurprisingly, they've done very well in terms of their revenue and the 7NM process has become the biggest re revenue generator as of the fourth quarter of 2018. And they said that 7NM has already generated 10% of the entire 2018 revenue despite only having been really ramped up in June of last year. Now obviously they're seeing other technologies still do really well for themselves, but 7NM has become the biggest share of revenue in the fourth quarter of 2018 and they are fully expecting it to increase, unsurprisingly so. So next up we're going to go to some PC gaming related news regarding Mortal Kombat 11. 
So, for those lucky few of you who actually managed to go to the reveal in London last night, I'm extremely jealous because I actually wanted to go, you will undoubtedly know that Mortal Kombat 11 is making its way to the PC, which should fill you with some trepidation if you were around at all for what happened with Mortal Kombat X, because it launched in what can only be described as an absolute shambles. Um, it was eventually turned around with updates and blah de blah de blah, but obviously when it launches in such a poor state, it doesn't really fill you with confidence. But developer NetherRealm have said that things are going to be different this time around, apparently. So they have said that they're working with QLock to actually bring MK11 to the PC, and they actually fixed the previous game for the PC release, and also they were the ones responsible for the PC edition, edition sorry, of Injustice 2, and that was rather solid as well. So they seem to have a better company at the helm. Now unfortunately there were no comments made by NetherRealm as to any PC specific features like um, ultra wide monitor support or how it's actually going to perform or anything like that, but he is basically saying that he wants it as equal as possible on all platforms. So, assuming that they are still working, or they, they are good to their word, because obviously they are still working on um, the PC version because the game isn't out until April the 23rd, we should be seeing a much, much better release for Mortal Kombat on PC, but it couldn't really be much worse than last time. So, let's just hope for good. I'll settle for good, you know, I'll settle for a good port. If it's missing PC specific features, that's a shame. But as long as it is actually, you know, playable, that, that would just be lovely. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people just buy it on console if they have one or just don't buy it at all after what happened last time. But I think if it comes out and it's at least, you know, decent, it'll be. It'll restore some confidence at least, but I would I would still wait for reviews. It's great that they've got a better company this time around. That definitely is reassuring, shall we say, but I'm going to wait just to see what it's like when it actually comes out. That's my personal thing that I'm going to do, and that is what I always well, just advise to you, to be honest, for your own sanity more than anything else. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, just what is highly appreciated. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.